And so Ja'far gave that eloquent response that all of you have read and have heard so many times. It is, wallahi, the pinnacle of eloquence. And it shows us why the Prophet ﷺ chose Ja'far to be the leader. Because to be a leader, you need to have a personality. And you need to have eloquence. Without this, you really cannot be a leader. And Ja'far had both. And that's why Ja'far marches in firm. He's not going to bow his head down. Had it been others, maybe they would have collapsed under the pressure. Not Ja'far. And when he was sincere to his faith, that sincerity automatically brings about respect. And you know, the fact of the matter, brothers and sisters, when you stand up for what you believe, even if your opponent doesn't agree with you, they will, in some sense, even if they hate your guts, they must respect you for being firm to your principles. This is just a fact of human life. It doesn't matter whether they agree or disagree. They could hate you more for being so stubborn. But one part of them will respect. And this is what Ja'far is basically doing. He's staying firm to his religion. So Ja'far responds and you know you all know this beautiful passage which really should be read many times and memorized. I'll just narrate it and it's something that we have read since we were kids. Your Highness, we used to be a nation steeped in Jahiliya, And we would worship idols. And we would eat this dead meat. You know, if an animal dies, we'll eat it. Now, of course, the people of, of Abyssinia are Christians, right? And they have some sense of ethics and morality. And uh, they have some civilization. You know, they have structure, they have buildings, they have society, they have morals. Makkah, as we said over and over again, really and truly was just completely backward. And it's something many Muslims don't, doesn't click for them. Uneducated, backward people, they have no clue what is civilization. So Ja'far is trying to explain, we were basically, you know, jahil, we're living in Jahiliya. That's exactly the word he uses. We were living in Jahiliya. And we used to perform uh, fahisha. We didn't have a sense of right and wrong. Fahisha means sexual immorality. We didn't have laws, we just go do zina. It's not something we had ethics to do. And we would break the ties of kinship and treat our neighbors in contempt. The strong amongst us would eat up and devour the weak. It was all about who was the stronger one. And we remained in this state until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a messenger to us. Now, again, he's very wise here because the Negus knows what is a messenger. The Quraysh had never seen a messenger. It's not in their culture. The Negus is a Christian. He knows very well what a messenger is, right? And the whole speech of Ja'far shows that he understands the psychology of Negus. And he shows how to give da'wah. So he says, Allah sent us a messenger. This messenger was known to us. He's from our community. We know his house and his lineage. And we know his truthfulness. And he never spoke one lie in his life. And he invited us to believe in one God alone. This is the religion of Christianity and Judaism, monotheism. And to leave idol worship. And he told us to abandon the ways of our forefathers that are, uh, and to leave the worship of stones and statues. And he commanded us to be true when we speak and to fulfill our promises and to fulfill the ties of kinship. He told us to be good to our neighbors and he commanded us to avoid all evils. He told us to not spill blood to give true testimony. He forbade us from eating the property of orphans. He forbade us from accusing uh, uh, others of adultery. And he commanded us to worship Allah alone without associating anything with Him. He told us to pray and to fast and to give charity. So we believed in Him. And we followed Him. And we had faith in Him. And we worshipped Allah alone. And we gave up worshipping idols. And we forbade upon ourselves everything that He told us to, for, to, to for, uh, forbade. And we made permissible all that He allowed for us. But our people opposed us. And they showed hatred towards us. And they tortured us. And they punished us. And they tried to force us back into idol worship. And they were unjust to us. And they made life miserable. And they prevented us from being who we were. So when they did this, we emigrated to your land. And we chose you above all other rulers. And we wish to come under your generosity and hospitality. And we put our trust in you that we would not be shown injustice in your land, O exalted highness. 